All right, hey everybody, it's the Helm Developer Call for October 1st, um, already in October. Um, so let's jump into announcements. First we have from Bridget about how projects join the Helm organization. Do you wanna say anything on that, Bridget? Oh, just that the proposal is in there and it requires people to uh, you know, upvote it or object to it or change it. And um, Butcher wrote it and I put it in in the required format and it would be great to uh, get that in because that will help move other things along. Thanks, Bridget. Just a quick question on the HIP 003. So you took the number, is that, can we just take a number or how does that work? <laughs> I just took the next number that didn't look like it had been merged, but I'm fine with us changing it if we want to change that. It's not I, don't that really, yeah, I don't care what the number wise. is. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll ask Fisher. The docs on it say uh, not to do a HIP once it's accepted and merged. That's the thing, time when we'll give it the number. But when you first draft it, because you never know if you've got like 10, right? You've got a race condition. You don't want to merge like a three if two still open. And so well, when it goes to be merged, I think that's when we do the HIP number. It's, it's documented in the HIP. I remember reading that. Well, okay, see, that I'll makes sense. The, I'll change the file number then. It makes sense, but when I made the HIP uh, 02, Fisher actually said, okay, I reserved 02 for you. Now you can put it in the, so I don't know what I mean, reserve. All right, we, I, I'll go back and read the doc. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so. I think we should go for UUID to just get rid <laughs> of any, any dough whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, and, and hash in the person's name. Yeah, but okay. can we do a version one UUID? Right, moving Don't on. Be naughty, Mr. Farina. Moving Don't on. Be. Using my moderator privileges. Um, so we also have a Helm maintainer session for KubeCon North America 2020. There's a sign-up sheet. That's Wednesday, November 18th. Um, between 4.55 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Yep, that um, was the... There's nothing to sign up for specifically. It's more if you want to answer community questions during our recording, uh, be in the Slack at that time. Okay, and then um, removal of governance section on first org Helm maintainer. Yeah, there was a section in the Question. governance that said uh, during the first org maintainer's election, there would be certain breakdowns. It was targeted at that initial election. Uh, which was like two years ago. And so I did a pull request to remove it because it does it is relevant to today's stuff um, and what we do now. And we have to get history to know where we came from with the changes to it. So I did a pull request. We now have enough votes as of uh, Reinhardt approving it. We've got the minimum number of votes. So I wanted to announce it here. Uh, we'll be removing that section. You can go see the pull request there. We've got enough votes in from the org maintainers now. Uh, I'm gonna, also gonna send it out to the mailing list, but I wanted everybody to see. This is just simple house cleaning, but yeah, that's it. All right, unmuted. Um, jumping into discussion. Um, first, we had something from Dan that we deferred from last week, um, announcing migration needs in CNCF blog or newsletter. Do you want to say anything on that, Dan? If you're speaking, you're muted. Yeah. Maybe not speaking. Okay. Maybe we can circle back to that one. Um, another one deferred from last week, um, Helm Hub to Artifact Hub timeline. Another one from Farina. Yeah, so I was hoping to do it last week. Didn't happen. Hoping to do it next week now. Deferred, deferred. Stuff happens. Yep. Um, also deferred from last week, Slack integration. Do we want that to might be this? a very simple question, but I noticed that the, the issue was sitting there and I thought, is there any good reason to say no to this? I don't see one, but if it would be great if people could look at it and see, should we do this? That's all. Okay, just a plug for a 
issue. Um, uh, yeah, Karen asked me to talk about the next couple because she wasn't able to be here. Okay. Um, if you know of an end user company, according to the CNCF's definition, which is to say not a vendor um, in the cloud native space, if you know of one that has a good Helm story, uh, CNCF is looking to feature, you know, you know how like when they, when the CNCF uh, uh, KubeCon chairs talk about project overview stuff, they were interested in saying, and here's this end user company doing stuff with our graduated project Helm. So if, if anyone can think of a good end user company story, that CNCF would like to hear about that. Um, and you can pass that along to me or Karen. So, okay. and uh, also for the Helm workshop, there's some links. Um, so if uh, you are signing up to help with that, take a look. And it's basically gonna be just like walking people through trying the Helm two to three plugin. And or if you would like to give a, a short presentation about same. And yeah, Karen is literally hosting a CNCF webinar right now, which is why she is not on this call. But yeah, so please take a look. Okay, great. And then um, feature detection in Helm, having to look up function. Farina, you had posted. Yeah, well, let's start with a fun little thing here, right? Um, if you want to know whether lookup, which didn't come in until Helm 3.1 was there, or any other template function that gets added, is available to use in a template. There isn't really a way to do that. In Helm v2, you could look at the Tiller version to understand what version of Helm was available for Tiller. And you could say, well, it was available in this version. In Helm v3, Tiller version went away, but Helm version didn't show up until Helm 3.3, right? So in Helm 3.1 and Helm 3.2, you can't use and 3.0, you can't use it. Right. And so if you go to look for something that's there, like let's say you want to test to see if Helm version's even there, you can't because it's not a map string interface, it's a struct. And so to try to get a property that's not on a struct throws an error rather than telling you. You can't even ask for its type or anything like that. So you can't depend on the Helm version being there because if you're a Helm 3.0 or 3.1 or 3.2 user, you don't have it. And you can't say this, this chart is only good for certain versions of Helm because we say it's only for, good for certain versions of Kubernetes. So is there a way to know whether stuff's there that you can use it in a chart to maybe come up with more than one, to use a lookup function if it's there or if not, not? Anybody got any ideas? Because I'm stumped. Um, I, I don't know retroactive, but we could include instead of a property off a struct, a function off a struct, because it's the same call in a template. So then at least you can have a fallback moving forward. But as far as going back, we can't really add something in previous versions. Or is there a hack you can use in a previous version with the template function that I don't know of? Because going forward, we have Helm version now. So you can literally check the version of Helm and see whether something's included or not, because you know from the version. It's, it's weak, but it still gives you something. The question is, is how do you handle older versions of Helm to detect things? I think there might be a way. Is there a hack we could use with a template function or something that I don't know about? That's what I'm looking for, a hack. They showed up in the issue queue with an issue. Uh, and so if you know a trick, that would be awesome. I'll think about it a bit. Okay. So I've tried four or five things and none of them have worked so far. Okay. Um, and then the next one was from Bridget for a new feature to add option to force override um, release service. Oh yeah, I was, I was taking a look through to see which stuff we should be stressing out the most about in terms of, you know, V2 going away. And I saw this one and I thought, hmm, there's some people saying in the comments here that this is a blocker for them. Is this something we think we can do something about? I don't fully understand what the override is, so it's possible it's not possible, but I thought that that might be a good one to point out just because some people are like, this is a blocker for us. Okay, that, that has to do with like the same area that we were just discussing, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, 
this is because they're probably what using um, uh, labels and the labels are the immutable ones. And so by switching to Helm, they can't take over what they've already got running. And so now they need to keep it as Tiller because they're labels, right? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, the issue I don't is... know the answer. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, the service was um, because multiple things, um, we left it open so multiple things could install Helm charts. So the service was saying like, oh, this was installed from Tiller, so you'd have the audit. So now that Tiller doesn't install things, it got changed to Helm. Yeah. So if they have something built on, I, That's an yeah. So, so the problem is, is when you're doing a, um, why well, am I forgetting the type of label? It's the label where you look something up. Um, it's the, it's not the label on it. It's in the spec for your stuff. Basically, it's, there are mutable labels, right? On things like deployments and stateful sets and stuff like that. So, if you happen to stick your heritage in there, your tiller from way back in the day, you stuck all your labels in there, which you shouldn't have done, then you're now stuck because Helm can't upgrade it because instead of tiller, when you move to Helm 3, it says it wants to change it to Helm and it generates it. That's an immutable label. Kubernetes is going to reject it. You can't upgrade. So what they're asking for is a way to say, don't use Helm as it. Let me inject my own um, thing. And we could probably add something like that as a flag and then, then let them set the flag to tiller. Is that the kind of thing people would be amenable to? Is this something that should be built into Helm though? To fix a use case that somebody might have done, or in this case, somebody did do, but it seems like to correct in the, end user thing, we're going to use a field that's not what it was intended for. Yeah, because one point I have on this is the two to three plugin doesn't change the release service. It keeps it as Tiller. It's when you do an upgrade, it'll move it to Helm. It can't move it to Helm. If it's an immutable label. Release that service isn't immutable. No, but their, their problem is theirs are immutable labels. On theirs a are set. Immutable. They're saying that, that they have the heritage label, which is Tiller. This is totally old school, heritage label. We use a different label for it now. Is Tiller, and that's in the immutable labels they have that. So what's updating that heritage label from Tiller? Helm, when Helm 3 goes to do it and it regens it, even if it generates the same chart, it's no longer Tiller that rendered it, it's Helm that rendered it. And so Helm is the name listed. Yeah, because it was for auditing information. And what they did is okay. they moved, correct me if I'm wrong for you, but they moved that to an immutable field or we had it in an immutable field, so. This is in the templates. This isn't somebody's templates. Right, I know it's the labels yeah. for the objects. This is the match labels for the objects. It's the match labels. But, but is that something that Helm forces in? No, it's something they chose to do in their chart. Right, so, so I'm definitely sympathetic to them, but it sounds kind of like we're working in a workaround into the Helm project to fix one end user's way that they sh implemented something a specific way that wasn't suggested. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like something that they know it's immutable. So you can't go change it. There's no way to change this. The problem is, is that the only way, so say they've got something running in production. The only way is to tear it down and stand up a new one. That is the only fix for this. I just posted a link to a, um, a comment from last year um, by Matt Fisher about some of these use cases. And there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue with, um, with some information about deletion and, and recreation there yeah. for what you're saying, Matt. 
Yeah, yeah because okay. I'll add one other thing as well. There's, there's a strange thing happening, and I, I've to. I've to going to have to track it down, but if you have a chart that is using an API, an old API version for a particular object, and then you upgrade to the next version, what it seems to be doing is it's keeping the two pods around. Uh, but I've, I have to track it a bit more to see, so, you know, it's, it's not totally tied to this, but you know, there's some relation to what's going on um, under the hood. Um, it sounds like we might be talking about two separate issues here. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. So looking at the, there's a pointer in the issue that points to a charts issue for MariaDB. And from what I understand, the, like Farina says, the chart itself creates a label using release service that used to be Tiller. So now it pushes it to Kubernetes with V2. It has a label, heritage Tiller, as chosen by the chart. Uh, V2 to 3 does not change that. And then when you upgrade, then release dot release dot service is now Helm. So the new uh, generated YAML chain wants to change the label and then Kubernetes says no. Uh, it can change a label. That's it what it normally does. Can change the label. Yeah. Yeah. It can change. The, it can change that release that service though. Yeah. Can they? Can oh so so is that what you're saying, Martin? Can can no the, no no. Uh, so that's what usually happens. Uh, the so it's not the release that service. So the release that service is changeable, basically. Where is it changeable? It can override it. So um, um, if you so when you do. A migrate over, it keeps the service at Tiller. And if you do an upgrade with Helm, it'll upgrade that to uh, Helm. But it can't be upgraded to Helm. Because uh, Helm, that's a change of the match label value from Tiller to Helm. It's immutable. You can't change it from Tiller to Helm. I don't know. I saw it happen. It, it was a different, it's not a regular label. It's a match label. Right. Uh, well, Regular labels, the values can change. Match labels are immutable and can't change. The problem well, is you, they have the, the, the label of tiller in a match label. Which I'm fairly should. sure if you migrate across a deployment and you run Helm tree upgrade on that, it will change that from tiller. Match to labels are immutable. You can't change any label on a match label. Any yeah, at all. Th th this or issue we've had even outside of this, where people have just tried to change match labels, even in their templates, and it you can't do it. Um, so if you okay. force something um, that's going to change into a match label in your template, it will break if you yeah. try to change that. That's just how deployments work in Kubernetes. And stateful sets. There, it's yeah. not so if you go look in a chart, like the, the Helm create chart, it has two labels. There's labels, and then the other one might even be called match labels. And match labels is a subset. It has like the instance name, and then like the name, and no other information, the bare minimum needed to match. And that's what's put into the match labels. And then all of the rest is put into the metadata labels because those are immutable. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you and maybe I'm talking about something different, but um, pretty sure release that service gets updated. It can't change it on the match labels though. That cannot happen on a deployment. It can happen on the release object. It can happen in other places. But when you run Helm, whether it's Helm template or Helm upgrade, it's going to stick Helm now as the release service, which if you stick it in a match label is changing it. Yeah. So, so it's only in your template if you write this specific field that changed into a match label. So it's only it's chart specific. It's not something that um, is going to happen for every chart when you update it. It's only if you wrote into the chart to include this field that got changed into a match label. So it, say you put date in there and it updated the date, it would give you the same error. It, it has nothing to do with the actual field of release service. It has to do with they put a, a field that changed into a match label. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. 
So right. that, that's something you can't do. So that's why I was raising the question, is it Helm's responsibility to work around this if the template wasn't written to be able to be upgraded for? Just wondering, Adam, if it's a backwards compatibility issue where they assumed that dot release dot service was going to always stay the same. But it's defined as like the service that installs it, which I guess could be argued that it's still Helm. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is a lot of the older charts had this problem, uh, but it was clean. They were cleaned up by mostly by Cedric, if I remember right, um, in the community charts. But that doesn't mean that all the charts that users might have created based on those old templates before they were fixed uh, don't still have these. So, and and, and to, to take his uh, to take his fixes in, you literally had to install the new version and get rid of the old version of the chart, the new instances, literally, to, in order to fix that. So that's right. Some people may have just said, "No, it doesn't work. I'm not going to," and just forked it from there. Um, can I suggest though that we could go round and round about this? Uh, can we punt this to another venue and let Dan have his time to talk about his issue because he's back now? We'll eat up the whole time on this one, plus some. Move forward. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. The school was calling me. Um, so uh, I, yeah, I, I put in a, a draft of the blog post that I wanted to put into the CNCF. Um, they have a deadline. <laughs> they have a deadline uh, of October 5th to get this in so that it can make the uh, newsletter. Um, so uh, I got a few comments from Karen on it and Bridget made a few comments, which were helpful. Um, but I think I just wanted to know, like, overall, if, if people can take a look at it and tell me, like, is this the right direction? Because there's a few pieces where it's like, okay, this is, you know, I'll put in instructions for how to do these different things, but um, wanted to make sure that it was kind of in line with what people expected in terms of an announcement, saying, reminding people that they should get this done. Sorry, Dan, did you put a link? Did you put a link to where it's posted or? Yes, there's one in the notes, but I'll put it right here. Well, if it's in notes, it's fine, thank you. Just quickly wanted to say, I will definitely um, contribute to this, Dan, and I'm sorry I missed our chat <laughs> yesterday. <clears throat> no worries, we got, we've got uh, four or five days just to, to get it cleaned up and then we can get it um, submitted. Um, but I wanted to make sure that like, I feel like it's a little bit backwards. Like I'm trying to kind of discover like the happy path here. And um, some of those items, I don't know if they're, if they're completed, like if we have, uh, I think that, I, I'm sorry, I don't know now, now if the Helm client has been updated so that it automatically updates everything when it runs. But, uh, you know, nice to have all that stuff in there. So Matt Farina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the biggest <clears throat> open question is uh, is the thread that we have on what we're going to do with package history from the stable and incubator charts. There are ideas on how to fix it and there are some solutions, but we just haven't quite resolved yet what we're going to recommend to users, right? Yeah, and, and uh, I don't know that we'll have one recommendation. Um, Chart Center obviously produces one thing. Um, uh, another thing I'm working on is, and I don't know when it'll be ready, is a tool to let you uh, copy a Helm repo from one location to a local location. And I'd like to have actually configure or build it so that it can filter down to just specific charts. So if you say, I just want the MySQL chart, boom, it'll copy down and get the package history for you. Um, I think that's important for people who have trust issues and say, you know what, if stable's going away, I want to have that history myself. Um, so yeah. that, that's another, and, and grabbing any, um, yeah, there's a little nuances to it. So I'm working on that, but I don't know when it'll be done. Um, that's another thing. I, well, I you know. and I have a, a provisional 
time to co collaborate on some of the work we've both done independently on that and maybe we can merge it together so quickly and just sure. get something soon. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's little things like you can use things like Git subtree to rip out part of the stable repository to get the history there. Um, if you just wanted in Git, I mean, that doesn't give you all the package builds, that kind of thing. Um, my, my first gut is to, and I know I talked to, to Remus about this, was just to point people at Chart Center. I'm totally fine just saying, you know, you need the old versions of these charts and you need to keep getting them. Use Chart Center as the place to go um, <coughs> because they have volunteered and he's been cool with that. So since we're at time, I, I know I'm not monitoring this, but I need to drop, but I do want to continue this discussion. Uh, we, maybe we can do it on async and then continue next week. Actually, uh, that's, we'll miss that's our deadline, I think. In Slack then? Yeah, in Slack would be good. Okay. So, I'll, so Scott, I'll work primarily with you. Is there anyone else that um, wants to uh, uh, be kind of a, a take a look resource here? I think Scott's going to handle it then. I, I just read through it. It looks pretty good, Dan. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Okay, and we're at a minute over, so that's time. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. See you all next week. Bye. See you.